A trip on the Polar Bear Express was to take us to Canada's far north, to the precincts of James Bay, the edge of the Arctic. A full day's journey by car from St. Joseph Island to Timmins took us through many miles of virgin forest, interspersed here and there by pristine lakes and rivers. On the way we came across a black bear fossicking on the edge of the road and from the safety of the car were able to record the occasion. That night we settled into the Comfort Inn at the city of Timmins in the heart of the James Bay frontier region. The following day we travelled the short distance to the community of Cochrane which lies just north of the 49th parallel. After booking in at the Northern Lights Motel for the night, we went to the rail station to book a tour on the Polar Bear Express for the following day. Across the road from the station is the Railway and Pioneer Museum, created as a tribute to the men and women who developed Northern Ontario. Steam engine number 137 was donated by the Tamiskaming and Northern Ontario Rail. It was operated for the last time in 1972 and still retains many original fittings from the days when it was fired by coal. The first car was donated by the Canadian National Rail and contains displays of Indian articles used in the days before the town of Cochrane existed. Loggers, axes, saws and hand tools line one wall. An old typewriter and a rope making machine among the exhibits captured our attention. The blacksmithing compartment highlighted the days when the construction of roads was the responsibility of the Northern Development Branch. The homesteader's log cabin was not a bachelor apartment. Oil lamps were used for lighting back in that time. We found an old coffee mill on display and water had to be drawn by pumping. Wood fuel was used for the stove. There were many other domestic articles on display, including homemade implements and furniture. Note the old washing machine and hand method of removing excess water from the washing. The next car contained a model train display and introduced the main railway exhibits. The models typify the layout of the rail systems in these remote areas of Northern Ontario. The coach still retains the original seating and fittings of carriages once used on this rail system. The coach is also used as a small classroom. Judy examines an old telegraph office, which is set up in a corner of the carriage. And many other items of a domestic nature were displayed.
One of the cars is dedicated to a young Cochrane ice hockey player, Tim Horton. Born and raised in Cochrane, Horton became a legend in ice hockey and was voted to the Toronto Maple Leafs all-time greatest team by fans of all ages. Born in 1950 and dying in 1974 as the result of an accident, this museum tells of this young man's life story as an ice hockey player and entrepreneur. At the rear of the train are to be found specimens of some Northern Ontario wildlife. The caboose has been preserved as far as possible in its original condition. It was known as a travelling hotel for countless workers on the railway. Early next morning, we boarded the Polar Bear Express, bound for Moosonee at the tip of James Bay, a distance of approximately 300 kilometres into the northern wilderness. We all settled down in our seats for the long ride, which was expected to take about five hours. After the train had been underway for a while, some folk wandered and chatted to other passengers, while others took the opportunity to get some sleep, but our interest was mainly concentrated on the scene outside of the window. Several kilometres up the track were areas of the forest devastated by a fire in 1976, which burnt out 30,000 acres of forest. The scars of this were still quite visible from the train. By late morning, John and the boys decided it was time to have lunch in the dining car. It was also possible to purchase a snack from the cafe bar and eat it in the passenger coach. The roads to the north end 111 kilometres from Cochrane and from here on the train is the only form of transport for the people in this isolated part of Ontario. The Little Bear is the Northland's freight train service between Cochrane and Moosonee and is one of the last flag stop trains in Canada, stopping where required along the track to let people on and off. We had been travelling for almost four hours when we came to Moose River Crossing, the longest crossing on the Ontario Northland rail system. The river is almost one kilometre wide at this point. Now well north, and almost at our destination, we noted that the vegetation was very sparse and the trees appeared rather stunted in their growth. Finally, after almost five hours on the train, we arrived at Moosonee. The town was established in 1903 by the Revion Frere Trading Company of Paris in opposition to the Hudson Bay Company on Moose Factory Island. The rain was coming down steadily now and the gravel roads were quite muddy, 
so we did not get much of a look around the town other than to visit the cafe and gift shop. We next boarded a bus and a guide gave us a quick resume of the activities for the afternoon. Where there's a craft store and a restaurant, things of that nature. About 2 o'clock we'll get on board the Polar Princess, which is a 65 foot steel hulled vessel, enclosed so you're not out in the rain. Uh, it's about a 20 minute boat ride to Moose Factory. Once we get on the island, there's a bus there. We have three stops on the island. Spend about an hour and a half or so there. Get back here roughly 4.30. Soon we were at the dock and a quick dash through the rain soon had us comfortably aboard the Polar Princess for a 20 minute trip across the Moose River to the island of Moose Factory. A variety of craft ply these waters Freighter canoes can be seen tied up at the shore as we pass by. Barges hauled by powerful tugs carry goods from this port to communities along the northern coast. The Polar Princess negotiated a channel between Sawpit and Charles Islands on the way to Moose Factory. Moose Factory was established by the Hudson Bay Company as a fur trading post back in 1673. The land was originally inhabited by ancestors of the Swampy Cree Indians. Over the centuries, the Cree have adapted to this rugged land very well using canoes for transport during the summer and toboggans and snowshoes in winter. On arriving at the island, we were taken to the Anglican Church Hall for light refreshments and an opportunity to purchase some locally made handcrafts. <laughs> Alongside of the hall stood an authentic Cree teepee. On entering the teepee, we were delighted to find a Cree woman cooking bannock over an open fire. This was similar to damper with raisins in it and was wound around a stick. A brief stop at the St. Thomas Anglican Church allowed some folk to brave the rain for a look inside. Wooden plugs in the holes in the floor are said to have been installed after the church floated off its foundations during an unusual flood. The Hudson Bay Staff House was built by shipwrights more than 150 years ago. We stopped here to get a look at the interior of this old building and some of the furniture, tools and history of the 300 years of the fur trade industry in this far north region. On returning to Moosonee, it was noticeable that the tide had dropped considerably during the three and a half hours since our arrival. 
several Indian canoes were moored at the dock as we left to board the Polar Bear Express for the return journey to Cochrane. Daylight hours are quite long here at this time of the year and it was still light as we set off in the evening. There was little happening in the entertainment car at this point on the return journey. By now it was late in the evening and the shadows were lengthening as we slowed past this small settlement of coral rapids deep in the forest. It seemed a good time to take our evening meal in the dining car. A little further down the track, we were able to get a view of the Otter Rapids Dam and Generating Station before the daylight faded. And we settled down to sleep for the rest of the journey to Cochrane. It was the end of a very long and interesting day.